Hi again and welcome back to the Projects Academy's PMBOK Planning Group tutorial where you and I will continue on our journey to master the 23 planning processes harnessing the power of Microsoft Project. Talking generally about developing the project management plan, how have you and I done so far? We've started off with the Develop Project Charter and I've taken you through to step four which is creating the work breakdown structure. So step five is to plan schedule management. Just like I said earlier, these are strategies. It creates the schedule management plan and defines how the schedule will be defined, how it will be measured, how and how often progress will be tracked and how to manage plan variances. There's a lot of hows there. So if you weren't sure before, now you know that these are strategies. And just to complete the picture, it also describes how progress will be reported. So all good stuff here, definitely needed. But this doesn't cut to the chase yet about what we do after we've got our work breakdown structure created. Which brings us nicely to the all important step six. This is so important in your understanding. It's called define activities. I'm just looking at the matrix within the PMBOK guide. You might be forward to thinking this is a one time thing to do and then you develop it further from there on in. But no, it's not. This is definitely iterative as I will show you shortly. And just to remind you where Microsoft Project has got to now, you would now want to open a different file using those products, deliverables, activities that you did before. Split it now into your project phases. Okay. So as an example, when I showed you about stage planning, this might be the stage three plan here shown by what Microsoft Project called a summary bar. These have not been scheduled yet. They're just sitting there like soldiers at start date waiting to be told what the sequence might be. So this nicely captures the define activities step and how it might look in Microsoft Project. So let's take stock of where we are. Here's the first four steps. We've just covered plan schedule management and here again is define activities as represented by the diagram we've just looked at in the previous slide. Now what I'm about to show you is the piece that isn't obvious and is often not very well articulated in other training courses. Let's deal with the knowledge areas one at a time. A quick look at the process relating to quality within the planning process group. It's called plan quality management and it's here that if you check it out is that all important quality metrics data that you need to gather. Put simply, imagine if you were designing a food blender. You'd want to write down what makes a good one. Is it easy to hold in the hand? Is it safe? Does it have a range of fittings and so on and so forth? Everything that makes a quality food blender. Not something that I thought too much about as you can see. But nevertheless, it's these quality metrics for each of your deliverables or products. And the reason why I'm saying step seven goes back to six is because whatever those quality metrics are, there's going to be activities that need to be carried out to first of all identify these and secondly to carry out the quality checking. So these will now need to be added within the define activities process. And here's another one. What about plan risk management? That also along with plan risk responses fall under the planning group. But the point here and it is not shown clearly within the PMBOK guide, although it is in the sixth edition, and that is having planned the risk responses, you then need to implement them. So if you need to implement them, then planning risk responses means they need to be included as activities and resources within your plan. So one more time, this will cause extra activities to be added. I think you've got the picture here. Following your eye down, you then got the activity called plan procurement management, and the procurement management plan will also need to contain activities relevant to carrying out your procurement, if any. And I'm suggesting seven, eight and nine might be a reasonable sequence. Indeed, these sequence numbers I'm going to share with you next, you might agree to do them in a different order, but that's not important here. What's important is, for example, at step number 10, which is the process plan stakeholder management, you generate a stakeholder management plan. This too is a strategy. It says how exactly you intend to manage the stakeholders. Well, how exactly needs to be translated into activities and resources. So that too feeds back here. Step 11 is the same thing with communications. Communications, as you know, is a two-way street. Who are you going to communicate with? Who's going to do the communicating? And so on and so forth, adding activities here. And then step 12, plan human resource management, which contains that all-important staffing management plan. These are your resources. And as a result of knowing who your resources are, they will also need to carry out activities. 
So although you could take step 7 through to 12 and consider that they're quite iterative and there's nothing sacrosanct about the sequence I've shown it, what's important is that all of these are carried out and these activities are combined, which now brings us to step 13. And you'll see that as a lucky step, not an unlucky step, because it's sequencing the activities. Now here Microsoft Project will pay huge dividends. Here's that same list of tasks, and here you've linked them to show the logical order. Would you do this in the planning tool directly? No. As part of a planning workshop, usually using post-it notes one more time, one for each of these activities, you then work out what the sequence is and bring that back into the planning tool. So now you've got a first draft, if you will. Which brings us to step 14, estimate the activity resources. One more time, Microsoft Project comes to the rescue here. Here I've created a resource pool. Notice it shows us humans there, but also non-human, such as material. Don't forget equipment and tools and so on and so forth. And here you can enter work and cost details. Microsoft Project is very powerful in that regard. And then step 15, of course, is estimate the costs. Well, yes, indeed, you would need to consider each activity and estimate the work effort involved with each, plus any tools and equipment, and come up with the total cost. And you would do that by simply assigning the relevant resources within Microsoft Project to each activity. Something like this, in fact, which brings us to step 16 within planning is called estimate activity durations. Well, you'd have done that, of course, by applying the right amount of resource work using associated views such as task information and stepping through these one at a time and assigning the individuals. What is misunderstood often is that you actually would look at a task and estimate its duration. No, that would be a guess. What you actually do is assign the work effort and those that are available to carry it out to the task within a planning tool such as Microsoft Project and that will automatically what the start and finish dates are. You might be able to see here that you can build in project calendars to show non-working days which will automatically be taken into consideration. Not shown here, but within each of these resources, they'll have their own individual calendar. So you can show when they're away getting trained or taking their annual leave requirements or what have you. And you can track at the most detailed level here how much work they've done, how much work is remaining. So this will help you in forecasting. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. So you can carry out step 16, which is estimate the activity durations. Having done that, Step 17 comes very quickly because you've shown the linkage. You now have your schedule automatically created within Microsoft Project. And then step 18, again within planning, is determine the budget. And that, of course, you can do because Microsoft Project will have added up all of the costs of all of the activities and give you a total budget number for the project and indeed for each stage, which are shown here as what Microsoft Project calls summary bars. And you can go into these and find out the cost, work, duration, resources and so on for each phase summary bar. So that's just about it. You now know not just about the inputs and outputs because that's a separate topic but a typical sequence in which you carry out planning. And I hope you agree it makes a little more sense of this diagram which you'll have seen within the PMBOK guide. And you now know by looking at the closing process group the process that's called close project or phase has some real meaning. So that, in a nutshell, is how to deal with the planning process group. As I said at the beginning, over half of your processes. But I'd be remiss if I didn't just quickly remind you of two other important process groups, and that's the executing and monitoring controlling processes. Again, I want to bring you back to Microsoft Project. Here I've shown something called the Tracking Gantt split-screen view. And here for each activity, you have two bars. The lower grey one is your agreed baseline. Now that's a term you are already very familiar with. And on the top of it, it shows your actuals. Now at the moment, I've obviously just created this baseline and they all lay over each other neatly like a sandwich. But as activities happen, you'll find that these part company in the timeline and you can see exactly how any variances to the schedule. And by looking at future activities, you can determine what dates have changed as a result of that. But then with the split screen view, you can look at the resources that have been assigned to each activity and you can update those and Microsoft Project will show you automatically what the result would be. So before you need to escalate this, you can use this very powerfully as part of change control. As you go through the options and find out what the impact might be of saying yes to a particular request for change, you can see exactly what the consequences would be and thereby help you to make an informed choice. 
So I hope you found this brief tutorial on the Pinbot planning process group useful. And if you can spare another 30 seconds of your time, I have something which I think will be of special interest to you. You see, Projects Academy has our own PMP masterclass consisting of online streaming videos. In fact, 24 of them. And here's a few snapshots with me teaching you one-to-one -one so that you won't miss a thing. If you hop on over to our website, www.projects.com, I'll give you that later, you'll be able to see far more information on what is covered here. We also, of course, do a Microsoft Project 2010 Masterclass, and it assumes that you are a complete novice to the planning tool, and it will take you all the way through to advanced. And you might be asking yourself, well, that isn't the latest version, which is 2016. Why are you so keen on using this version? Well, the bottom line is, is that Microsoft, bless them, always want to bring out new versions with a few cosmetic upgrades because it helps them sell more product. And frankly, I've been using 2010 version since around that year. And as this detailed screenshot shows you, it provides you with everything you need. And another good reason is cost. If you check on Google, for example, you'll find that you can get your hands on a brand new version of 2010 for less than $50, rather than paying hundreds more for the 2016 version. Another way of saying thank you for watching, I've got a little deal for you. Imagine if we combine both our PMP Masterclass and Microsoft Project Masterclasses together. How would you like to have both for a rather special deal? That's right, I'm offering you a double offer. How would you like to get both of them without paying the normal price, which is £174? You can have them for just £134. So instead of paying full price, you get a massive £40 discount. But since it's streaming masterclasses, I'm offering it as a first come first serve basis. So don't miss out, grab your copy now. And here's the link to reserve your copy, www.projects.com forward slash PMP bundle. And because I'm so confident that you'll find this offer invaluable, it's backed by my personal ironclad money back guarantee. So on behalf of myself, Dave, and my business partner, Nick, from the Projects Academy, thanks for watching and good luck in your continuing project management career.